Welcome back to another Super Magnet Man video. This time we're going to be working on one that we've been working on for about a month to pull together all the data that we want to present in this one. And this one is on the factors affecting eddy current drag. Now eddy current drag, also called the lens effect, is something that we've known about for a long time and there have been a lot of applications using it. And some of the things that we're most familiar with is the dropping a ring magnet through a piece of copper pipe. And this is something that kids in elementary school classes will do as an experiment to see how magnets work and different things. And I've done it thousands of times with kids in elementary school classes. So it's very interesting to see this. You've seen some of our other videos where we drop a really large magnet on blocks of copper and you see the difference as to how it does and how it bounces back up. The eddy current effect is so strong. And so one of the things I wanted to do, because we get so many questions about eddy current drag, people are coming up with all kinds of applications that use this effect in different ways. And so what I wanted to do is come up with a video that would cover all of those factors. So the first thing I did is I went to Quora. That's where we all like to go and ask questions. And so I asked the people on Quora, what are the factors that affect eddy current drag and what is an equation to be able to calculate those different effects? And the answers that I got back were it was basically too difficult and complicated to explain in answering a Quora question, which I can understand. As an electrical engineer, I went through some of the EMAG classes in college. That was years ago, but I went through those classes. And I remember the math is extremely complex and can take a long time to work out. And so I said, okay, the best thing to do is to set up an experiment where we would look at the factors that affect eddy current drag. First factor that we're going to look at is aluminum versus copper. We know from all the experiments we've done that aluminum is just nowhere near as strong as copper. So all of the experiment that we're going to do here, all of the experimental data is with copper. You just know if you were going to do the same thing with aluminum instead of copper, the force would be weaker. The first thing that really affects it that we wanted to look at is air gap. And so in pretty much all of our experiments, what we're doing is we're varying the air gap and this gives us something to plot our curves on. So we're looking at air gap in all of the experiments. The second thing is the copper thickness. We have these copper discs that are six inches in diameter, 150 millimeters, and one millimeter thick. Then we have a two millimeter thick copper plate, same size, and we have one that's three millimeters thick. So this gives us a variable. How much different is this effect with one, two, or three millimeter thick copper? That gives us enough data points to evaluate. Next, we're looking at magnet orientation. And magnet orientation is, is it better to have south, north, south, or north, south, north, whichever, as you go around, or is it better to be all one pole pointing up? And so we did the experiment on this and we'll have those results as well. Another thing that comes up is what about the spacing? Does it matter how close we get them together? Now you have the obvious answer that if I have my, if I'm looking at one with 12 magnets, 30 degrees arc separation, and eight, I get 50% more magnets with this. So obviously the whole, filling up the whole pattern would be better with this than with this. But I was wanting to look just at looking at three magnets and spacing it out with 12 magnets, 10 magnets, and eight magnets. So this will give us an idea of how much spacing affects the eddy current drag. Now in our experiment, we're going to be having a steel plate. It's a fairly thin piece of, of steel. And we mount these on our plate and we have them spaced out and we line it up. And we're going to be using a drill press. That's our motor that spins these. This allows us to compare these. That allows us to change our next factor, which is going to be rotational speed. The rotational speed is a big factor because speed is just as important as the thickness and the air gap. And we want to see how all that relates together. So our drill press allows us to change the belts and we'll go with 660 and 1120 and 1700 RPM. And then we've had people in the past that have asked, does it make a difference if you have slots cut in your disc? And so 
we have one millimeter thick and a two millimeter thick cut with one millimeter thick slots that are the size of the magnets and we have 12 of them equally spaced on the disc and we'll see what effect it has to cut the slots in the disc. Now as any experiment we have to look at what are the things we're going to measure. We're going to measure the power drawn by the drill in watts. I've got a little watt meter that sits on the drill press and as we run it the gap gets closer we're going to see the increase in the watts and that'll give us a very good indicator between the different settings that we have so that we can see how much each of these settings affects the power drawn because the motor's having to do the work to overcome it and that's best represented with just pure watts. Then we're going to look at temperature and the way we measure our temperature is we will get the initial temperature reading, we run the experiment, we hold it in the eddy, drag, the eddy current drag position at the air gap we want with the settings we want for 10 seconds, then we stop it and we put the contact thermocouple back on it and we see what the temperature rise occurred during that 10 seconds of, of drag, which is going to increase the heat. And the other thing is, since we're going to be putting drag on the motor, we know it's going to slow the motor down. Slowing the motor down is going to change these effects. So we also monitored RPM. And I set up a little magnet and mounted it on the side of the drill press head. And then I put a uh, tachometer sensor, a hall sensor, right on the outside so that it could count very accurately what the RPM is as we increase the drag and the amount of RPM, the, the RPM on that motor begins to slow down. And so these will be the three things that confirm what we're seeing across the board. So let's go ahead and get started with our first factor. And the first factor is going to be looking at the difference in copper thickness. To start with, we're gonna take a look at this in graph form. Our first graph up, You'll notice that the x-axis is going to be air gap, and the y-axis is the power drawn from the watt meter. And this one is going to be looking at the difference in the power drawn by the one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter different disc. And so if you'll notice, going from an eight millimeter air gap on the x-axis, we go from an eight millimeter to a one, and you notice that your watts pull is going from 157 to about 215 on the one millimeter. On the two millimeter, we see it going 166 to 265, and on the three, it's going from 171 to 321. Remember, this is a one-third horsepower motor, so that's about 250 watts, and so we are exceeding the power capabilities of this motor. How does that affect RPM? On our next graph, you'll notice that you're looking for the RPM. And as we go from eight millimeters to one millimeter, the one millimeter thick copper goes from 662 RPM down to 642, just a slight drop. But the two millimeter goes from 659 down to 614. And the three millimeter goes from 656 all the way down to 600. So it's taking about a 10% hit on speed. This drill is running at 665 when it doesn't have any load on it at all. Now let's look at the temperature. This is where things get a little bit interesting. The one millimeter thick one, you'll notice, goes from four degrees temperature, that's degrees Fahrenheit, rise all the way up to 17 degree rise with, one, with a one millimeter air gap. The two millimeter also makes sense. It goes from one to 21, and that makes sense. It's 21 degrees Fahrenheit. But the, third, the three millimeter thick, this is kind of unusual because we notice that the temperature goes from about three degrees with an eight millimeter air gap all the way up to 13 degrees. Now we would tend to think since it's creating more drag effect, it would have a greater temperature increase. But a couple of things are working against us. Number one is it does slow it down a lot. Number two, we do see that it's drawing the motor and drawing a lot more power from the motor. So it is clearly doing a lot more work and so it's not having as much time to put that heat into it from the eddy current drag. The other thing is, is due to the thickness, it is taking longer for the heat to go through it and not the, the part of the copper that's away from the magnet, that's the farthest away from the magnets, is not getting as much effect as that that's close to the magnets. So we see that with the one, we really got a very good temperature increase. The two, we got a pretty good one. But when we went to three, it really started to slow us down. 
So now that we have this one, let's take a look at our next factor that we're going to talk about. This next factor was actually my first test. I wanted to see how magnet orientation affected everything because everything from this would extend from this first experiment. And so I set it up and it was a little bit more simple. I didn't have as much data with it because all I wanted to do was find out which orientation achieved the greatest drag forces. And so when I set this up, I set the, the drill RPM up to 1120, two millimeter thick copper plate, 30 degrees spacing. And now I had it, one set of uh, magnets was oriented north, south, north. And when I ran that test, as you can see from the graph, Starting at eight millimeters, it was 166 watts, and all the way down to one millimeter, it was 420, which was exceeding the power of the motor. And then when I put it in north, 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 it started at 147 watts, and you can see that's a below the 166 at eight millimeter air gap. It's already not doing very well. And at one millimeter air gap, it was only 245 watts of power. So that set me up for the rest of the experiments to know I wanted to look at the north-south-north or south-north-south configuration as the way we set it up. And so the rest of these tests, as well as the first one, were based on north-south-north configuration. So that brings us to our third factor, magnet spacing. And as we've mentioned earlier, the spacing we're going to be looking at is 30 degrees spacing, which is 12 magnets in a circle, 36, which was 10, and 45 degrees, which is 8 magnets. So it does increase the spacing between the magnets. Well, the most important factor that we're going to look at is the Gauss rating. And you'll notice I've got an orientation so that my magnets were labeled magnet 1, magnet 2, magnet 3. Now, magnet 2 is in the middle. 1 and 3 are on the ends. So they're seeing the disc moving towards it first, but the one in the middle is getting the benefit of some crossover flux from both of the two end pieces. So let's take a look at that graph. You'll see at 30 degrees, we get the first magnet is 3980, then we got a Gauss reading of 4160, and then we got a Gauss reading of 3960. So then we set it up for the 36 degree arc. And 36 degree arc we measured 3880, 4,350. You see it drops a little bit. Now we go to 45 and you see that the end ones are 3930 and 3850, but the middle one is 3660. So that middle one you can see a drop in flux. So just noticing the drop in flux would tell us that we would expect the 30 degree separation to give us the strongest eddy current drag. Now let's take a look at what the data shows us. I want to set this experiment up. First of all, all of this data is with a one millimeter thick copper disc. And we're going to be varying the spacing from 30 to 36 to 45 degrees. And the air gap is going to go from eight millimeters to one millimeters. So let's take a look at our first graph looking at power in watts. And you'll notice that on the 30 millimeter separation, it goes from 157 watts to 215. And then you look at the 36, it goes from 158, about the same starting point, to 207. So it's not drawing quite as much power. The 45 goes from 156 to 204. So you can see as we increase the spacing between the magnets, it steadily drops the power draw. So our next graph we're going to take a look at is comparing the RPM, the actual RPM. And so you can see that the 30 starts out at 662 and goes to 642. The 36 goes 660 to 645, and the 45, 664 to 648. Again, not quite as strong as it gets down closer, as it gets down close to it. The last thing we'll look at on this one is delta T, our temperature change. How much did that affect it? And so when you look at this, it's a little bit different. We see that it goes at 30 degrees from 4 degrees, about 4 degrees to 17, then uh, about 4 degrees to 18, and then about 2 degrees up to 18. Well, all of the temperatures end up about the same. 
Well, remember what's creating the eddy current drag, especially the heat, is going to be the individual magnets. And when I get all the way down to one millimeter air gap, the, all I have is the, the surface area of the magnet against the surface area of the copper based on speed. So when I see this, I'm not seeing that much of a difference in the final speed, and we don't see that much difference in the wattage. So even though it's not that big of an effect, you do get the best effect to have the magnets closer together, especially on the close air gaps. Now we're ready for our fourth factor, which is speed. Speed seriously affects how this eddy current effect works. So to set this experiment up, what we did is we used a two millimeter thick disc, and we had the 30 degree spacing, and we were only able to test the air gap from eight to millimeters down to five millimeters, because on the higher speeds, going any closer just seriously overloaded the motor, as you'll see. So when we set it up, we had three different drill speeds we were able to set up with the drill by adjusting the belt. And one was 665 RPM, the other is 1122, and the faster one was 1755. The first thing we did was get our power reading. And if you look at this graph, again, you'll notice that with a power reading, it is significant difference between the two. When I went from uh, on the 665 graph, you'll see it goes from 166 to about 190. When we get to 1122 RPM, it started at 195 at eight millimeters away and went to 265. The 1755 started at 262, pretty much where the other one ended, and went up to 380. Now when we looked at RPM, you'll see that the 665 just started at 659 and went to 652. Not a lot of change there. When you go to the 1122, it went from 1099 at eight millimeters all the way down to 1059. But when we look at our 1755, of course 1755 is what it's running in free space with no resistance against it. But it starts at 1658, about 100 below what its normal speed is, and dropped all the way to 1510. So we got a huge drop in RPM from the 1755. And then we looked at the temperature. And when you look at the temperature graph on this, you'll notice the 665 only went from one degree to four degrees. Then when you look at the 1122, it went from about seven degrees to 13. Now the 1755 gives us a little bit of interesting information because it sort of peaks at a lower uh, air gap. We really weren't sure what was causing this other than the, the thermal properties of copper and the ability to, to transfer the heat. And it may have been that our 10 seconds was a little bit longer, may have been 11 seconds in one case instead of 10. Whatever it was, we, we tested it a second time and got almost the same results. But you see that the 1755 goes from 14 to 20. Another thing that may have played into it is how readily the temperature in copper is going to increase as the temperature is increasing because the starting point for that fourth data point was much higher than the starting point on the third one. And so we were just looking at the delta T, but it could have had some effect on that as well. Uh, plus the spinning of it could be cooling it down. But anyhow, you can see that it dramatically increased the temperature at the 1755 RPM. Now we're gonna take a look at our last factor. Remember we had six, but the one that we're looking at in all of these is air gap. And this six factor is going to be, does it make a difference to have slots cut in our disc? How does that affect eddy current? So we'll take a look at that next. And looking at slots, we're just going to compare the same disc without the slots, what the data was, and the same disc with the slots, what the data was. So to set this up, we're only gonna be using our two millimeter disc, 665 RPM, 30 degree uh, magnet separation, going from eight millimeters to one millimeter, looking at power. You can see the one with no slots, the power goes from 166 to 265. The one with 12 slots cut in, it only goes from 162 to 220. So it's not creating as much drag because the motor's not having to work as hard. When we look at RPM, no slots gives us 659 down to 614. The one with slots gives us 658 to 638. So it's definitely not slowing it down as much. We look at the Delta T, no slots. I get a temperature from one to 21 degrees Fahrenheit increase in temperature. When I go from the 12 slots, it goes from two to eight degrees. So all around, we can see that if you want to decrease the eddy current effect of magnets moving against copper, you would use the slots. If you're wanting to maximize the eddy current drag, you definitely do not want to put slots in your copper. As a final piece of information to look at, 
we wanted to see just how much temperature rise goes up versus time. All of our experiments on temperature rise we've been doing for 10 seconds. So this time we wanted to vary that from 10 seconds all the way up to 60 seconds and see what the delta T rise is. And you will notice that with a 10 seconds we started out with a 3 millimeter thick plate and only a 3 millimeter air gap. That's the only air gap we're going to test. So at 10 seconds it got us a 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit rise in temperature. But when we get to 60 it is all the way up to 40.3 degrees Fahrenheit that we're seeing in just one minute. So this gives you an idea about a lot of your eddy current applications. You really need to be concerned about your thermal consequences. How fast are you going to rotate it? The faster you rotate it, the higher the temperature is going to go. The more work it's going to take to spin it, the higher the temperature is going to be. So there's a lot of factors that now you have some information, you know how to put them in. Okay, hopefully this helps you understand the factors that affect eddy current drag. We started with the air gap, which was a part of every experiment. We showed you the difference between one, two, and three millimeter thick disc. Then we looked at the orientation, north, south, north, or north, north, north. The spacing, 30, 36, 45. The speed and how speed affects it, as well as whether or not slots have an impact on it, which they do. So with this information, hopefully you're in, you're in a better shape to look at your application and determine the best way to either fight any current drag or to create any current drag. And if you have any questions, at Super Magnet Man, we're always here to help and we love for, for our customers to make these calls to us and to send us emails asking us these additional questions and make some comments down below. I'll be answering the comments on this video. So thanks again for watching and we're delighted that you're taking time to learn a little bit more about magnets.